My name is Emma Ross. I'm pleased to meet you. I've been a resident here for some time since so long about May and I could have it. And I have a little story to tell you. It's a story about my knack for picking bad apples. When I was young, I was kind of a girl that would always dream of some man that was going to sweep me away and take care of all of it for me and keep me in the manner to which I'd like to become accustomed to. And I thought I'd found him with my first husband, Angus Ross. He was a gambling man, and I went ahead and gambled on Angus. And things were fine at first, you know, we had a, a good life, but as I, time went on, I realized Angus was gambling everything away, and there was nothing left for me to, as I said, keep me in the style to which I'd like to be accustomed, so we ended up divorced. Angus isn't the reason I'm here, but you should know that I was a divorced woman, and, uh, I started staying in a boarding house run by Mrs. Cromwell on the 700 block of J Street. Mrs. Cromwell is not fond of me, unfortunately. I don't know why. Uh, she's not the reason I'm here either, but, uh, but yeah, she, she and I, we didn't get along so well. But at any rate, I was staying in apartment 11. Maybe it was because I was fond of drinking, I don't know. But apartment 11 of the, of the boarding house on 700 J Street, when I met Charles Covell, Charles Covell. Oh, he's good looking. And I thought, this is the man. This is the man that's going to fix it for me. He's a working man. He's not a gambler. He's not going to waste it all away. Charles worked for the Southern Pacific Line, and he was good looking, and he was so charming at first, and so wonderful, and he was already married. I didn't know that right away, but, you know, that's okay. I didn't want to get married again. I tried that. Didn't work out. First bad apple, right? Didn't realize what a bad apple Charles was, unfortunately. He didn't need a ring on my finger to keep me next to his side. He had another partner in the relationship by the name of Sam Colt. And, uh, yeah, his little, uh, little friend Sam Colt, he, uh, he used to take his pistol out and brandish it at everybody in the rooming house, at me. He used to tell me all the time, Emma, if you try to leave me, I'm going to kill you. No, he's not going to kill me. Me! I can tame his temper. That's fine. I can temper his temper. It's not a problem. So, you know, things went on. I was doing my best, making the best of it, living in the boarding house. And uh, all was going pretty good until April 1911 when Charles got laid off from Southern Pacific. And some of you may know about this. I understand there's some disturbance in the economy these days, but there is nothing like a man who's lost his job and starts drinking. It can get ugly pretty fast. And as I told you, Charles had a little bit of a temper, as I soon came to realize more and more. At any rate, he was angry. He started drinking. He didn't stop drinking. And I kept thinking, you know, maybe perhaps he is not the one for me. Maybe we should end our love affair. That might be a good thing. And he threatened me, Emma, if you try to leave me, I'm going to kill you. And I didn't believe him. And uh, anyhow, May 12th. 1911, we got into a pretty bad argument, and I thought, that's it, I'm done. I can't take this anymore. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get away from him. Three days earlier, Mrs. Cromwell, the landlady I told you about, she had asked me to leave the boarding house. I don't know why. It could be my choice of men. could be the drinking. could be the hollering. could be the fact that Charles would pull out that Sam Colt pistol every time we had any kind of a disagreement and start threatening me, the next-door neighbor, whoever was in the house at the time. But, at any rate... My plan was to leave, and he said, if you try to leave without me, I am going to hunt you down and kill you. I thought, no, that's it. You know what? He's been drinking since he's been laid off. I can run faster than he can shoot. Because if he's drunk enough, he can't hit me, right? Hell hath no fury like a man laid off, let me tell you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we started fighting that night. Uh, started in my room, screamed and hollered. Went to his room, screamed and hollered. Drank in between, drank afterwards. About 4.30 in the morning, I realized this is not ending well. I ran outside, and Mr. Hannigan was down the street. He was a teamster, and he was feeding his horses. And I said, oh, Mr. Hannigan, I have an errand. I need you to run. He said, is there trouble, Mrs. Ross? And I said, you bet there's trouble. I need you to come up here to apartment 11 quick. And I ran, and I ran up to my room. I didn't make it. I wasn't fast enough. Charles Covell grabbed me, dragged me into his room, locked the door. And I thought, ooh, <laughs> here we are. We started fighting for the gun, struggling. Matter of fact, he broke a fitting on my ring. I did break a pin in his pistol. But no matter what, 
He ended up shooting me three times that night. It still gets me every time I hear that, but you know, he can't get me now because I'm already dead. <sighs> he shot himself too right after he turned the gun on himself, fired two shots when they broke down the door and came in. Now I'll tell you, if Mrs. Cromwell wasn't fond of me before, she sure didn't like me after because there was blood from one end of that room to the other. The window, the vase, the shelf on the carpet. He lived for a few days. And when the police questioned him and they said, why did you do it? You shot her. She said, oh, and he said, I was just having some fun. Just having some fun. Who's having fun now, Charles? <laughs> Bad apples. <laughs> well, good evening, ladies. Most of you probably recognize me. I'm Jacob Klein, ladies' man. If you don't recognize me, then welcome to Sacramento. Now, as most of you probably know, I'm the lead brass player with the Sacramento Brass Band. And on a beautiful Saturday night like this and throughout the year, we always do a concert down there at the band shell at the city park. Now, on the night of June the 26th, 1886, it was no normal concert, at least not for me. Now, the concert went along pretty much as normal, and then we got to our last song, our theme song, Home Sweet Home. Do you like that song? I hate it. There is nothing good about that song. It's a dumb song. Actually, there is one good thing about it. It doesn't have a bugle part. So you know what that means? I can sneak off the back of the stage when the song <laughs> begins and head down to Joe's bar. And then I can get the best stool right on the corner, save a couple for my buddies. And then when the concert lets out, we'll all be sitting there watching all the pretty girls go by. Pretty girls go by? Ladies man? Well, I'm Fanny, and this ladies man did this to me. Uh-oh, <laughs> honey, you won't it tarnished my good name and my family's name, and he would not make an honest woman out of me. All I wanted from him was for him to marry me. Do you think he'd do it? No. You know the term commitment foe? He's the original commitment foe. And all I said was, Jacob, Jacob, please, just marry me. Do the right thing by your unborn child and me. But he refused. Ladies, man, please. So on that fateful Saturday night, the band began to play Home Sweet Home, and I was sneaking off the back of the stage. Ooh, hey, Fanny, baby, how you doing? Hi, Jacob. I'm sure you didn't expect to see me and our unborn child here, but I know your little antics. Hey. Sneaking off out the side door. Hey, honey, I don't know anything about that. Oh, really now? Well, I'm tired of you ignoring me. You can't ignore me, Jacob. You know what? It was great seeing you, Fanny, but I've got a date to keep, so uh, oh, I'll no, see you Oh, no, Jacob, you can't go. You can't see leave me, Jacob. I, I won't know. let you. No, Jacob. Oh. <laughs> Fanny killed Jacob in cold blood. You saw it yourself. I am as dead as a doornail right now. <laughs> now, Fanny would head down to the police station that night, turn herself in, and within just a few weeks, the crime of the century would be tried right here in the Sacramento County Courthouse. Now, the question wasn't whether or not she killed Jacob. The question was why. Young lady, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Where were you on the night, June 26, 1886? I was at the bandstand, Your Honor. And what were you doing there? Well, I went to the bandstand originally, but then I went over to Joe's bar. And who did you hope to meet? Jacob Klein. Jacob Klein. The one you murdered that night. Yes, Your Honor. Fanny Baby, why did you do it? Well, Your Honor, look at me. He did this to me. And he won't marry me, and he never would. So I had to do what any good, decent woman would do. And that was? 
I shot him in the head. Jacob Klein, dead at the age of 21. Friends, the jury took all of this into deliberation, and the next day, Fanny was acquitted for the murder of Jacob Klein. <laughs> Justice was a lot different back then, wasn't it? You, know, you may think our tale is over, but really, it has just begun. Please let your mind roll forward. The date is now March the 17th, 1917. Ah, oh, what a lovely spring day to take my baby for a walk out here by the county fairgrounds. Well, hi there, Myrtle. Mm, mm. Hey, Myrtle, get up and eat a tug. Charles, I have told oh. you, stay Myrtle, away. I'm just tug now. I, I know the way my tug. Charles, tug, whatever. You know that I don't want you coming around anymore. I, I, I want us to be a family again. That can never happen again. My, my name is Charles Tug Huber. You may recognize me as being the famous baseball star and ladies and men, extraordinaire. <laughs> uh, several years back, I, I used to play ball for both the Mansfield Pioneers and for the Tanson Watchmakers. But now, I'm, I'm back here in my hometown of Sacramento, and I am trying to woo, woo back my beautiful ex-wife, Myrtle. Um, it, it was a mistake that we ever separated in the first place. We have a beautiful seven-year-old daughter together, uh, Margaret, and we to your family again. You know, ladies and gentlemen, some of what he's telling you has a little bit of truth to it, but oh, it's true. true. It's true. We met young. We were, you know, in our late teens, and we thought we were in love, and we did get married. And yes, we do have a seven-year-old daughter, Margaret, but this man before us has been to jail. No, Margaret, there's... Petty larceny. No, it's the truth. No, he's been to jail. No, don't Not to only no. that, he's been to a place called Folsom Prison. One time. I'm one not time. Kidding. Three years in Folsom Prison for stealing a horse and buggy. Old news. I couldn't stay married to a man like that. Those three years he was in prison, I actually met another man, a better man, Charles, my new husband, Mr. Palermo, far, far better husband and better father than you. You need to get out of our lives. You need to get out of our lives. It is done. I never will love you again, and I don't want you to have anything to do with any of us. Stay away. We do not go back to San Francisco. You are not a part of our lives. I don't love you. I don't want you to be anywhere near our daughter Margaret anymore. This is over and done. Don't walk away from me, Myrtle. I am leaving forever. Myrtle. You can never be... Oh my God, what? Myrtle! Oh God, no. Myrtle! I'm still the only woman I've ever loved. Myrtle! <laughs> Sorry, Myrtle. Myrtle, 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 Myrtle. So there you have it. Lives entangled, enmeshed, complicated. Here was Jacob, my lover, the man who refused to marry me. And Tug, our son. Like father, like son. Ironic. Yeah, that gave me chills. Bob and I went to some talk about paranormal investigators. And they oh, claim yeah. people have cited Mothman. I've heard that. On this bridge. Well, I've never seen they it. They probably saw an owl or something. Yeah. I've been all under this bridge at all hours and it can be trippy, but it's really hard to tell what this, how big something is when it's flying. Yeah. Without reference points. Yeah.